was very late for school that morning and I was terribly afraid of being scolded, especially as Mosul Hamed had told us that he should examine us on particles and I did not know the first thing about them. For a moment, I thought of staying away from school and wondering about the fields. It was such a warm, lovely day. I could hear the black bears whistling on the edge of the wood and in the rippled field behind the sawmill, the prussians were going through their drill. What was much more tempting to me than the rules concerning particles, but I had the strength to resist, and I ran as fast as I could to school. As I passed the mayor's office, I saw that there were people gathered about the little board on which notices were posted. For two years, all our bad news had come from that board, battles laws, conscriptions, orders from headquarters, and I thought without stopping, what can it be now? Then as I ran across the square, watched at the blacksmith who stood there with his apprentice, reading a play card called out to me, don't worry so my boy, you will get to your school soon enough. I thought he was making fun of me and I ran into Mosul Hamid's little yard all out of breath. Usually at the beginning of school, there was a great opera which could be heard in the street, decks opening and closing, lessons repeated aloud in unison, with our ears tofuled in order to learn quicker. And our teacher's thought ruler beating on the desk, a little more quiet. I counted on all the noise to reach my bench unnoticed. But as it happened, that day everything was quiet, like a Sunday morning. Through the open window, I saw my comrades already in their places, and was your hammer walking back and forth with a terrible iron roller under his arm. I had not opened the door and entered, and in the midst of the perfect silence, you can imagine whether I blushed and whether I was afraid. But no, Mosul Hamel looked at me with no sign of anger and said very gently, Go at once to your seat, my little friends. We are going to begin without you. I stepped over the bench and sat down at once at my desk. Not until then, when I had partly recovered from my fright, did I notice that our teacher had on his handsome blue coat, his plated ruff, and the black silk embroidered breeches, which he wore only on days of inspection or of distribution of prizes. Moreover, there was something extraordinary, something solemn about the whole class. But what surprised me most was to see at the back of the room, on the benches which were usually empty, some people from the village sitting, as silent as we were, old Hazel with his teary cornered hat, the ex-mayor, the ex-postman, and others besides. They all seemed depressed, and Hazel had brought an old spelling book with gnarled edges which he had wide open on his knee, with his great spectacles askew. While I was wondering at all this, Muzihame had mounted his platform, and in the same gentle and serious voice with which he had welcomed me, he said to us, My children, this is the last time I shall teach you. Others have come from Berlin to teach nothing but German in schools of Alas and Lorraine. The new teacher arrives tomorrow. This is the last class in French so I beg you to be very attentive. Those words overwhelmed me. Ah, the villains. That was what they had posted at the mayor's office, my last class in French. And I barely knew how to write, so I should never learn. I must stop short where I was. How angry I was with myself because of the time I had wasted, the lenses I had missed, running about after nest, or slightly on the sir. My books, which only a moment before I thought so tiresome, so heavy to carry, my grammar, my sacred history seemed to me now like old friends, from whom I should be terribly aggrieved to part. And it was the same about Mosul Hamed, the thought he was going away, that I should never see him again made me forget the punishment, the blows with the ruler. Poor man, it was in honor of the last lesson that he had put on his fine sunny clothes, and I understood now why those old fellas on the field were sitting at the end of the room. It seemed to me that they regretted not having come often to the school. It was also a way of thanking our teacher for his 40 years of faithful service and of paying their respect to the fatherland, which was vanishing. I was at the point in my reflections when I heard my name called. It was my turn to recite what I had not have given to be able to say from the beginning, to end that famous rule about particles in a loud, distinct voice without a slip. But I got mixed up at the first words, and I stood there swaying against my bench with a full heart, afraid to raise my head. I heard Mosul speaking to me. I will not scold you, my little friends. 
you must be punished enough that is the way it goes every day we say to ourselves well guys this is for this video make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the notification see you on my next video